Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky confirmed Russian counteroffensive actions in Kursk region were ongoing during a briefing in Kiev on Thursday. Russians have started counteroffensive actions. It goes according to our, Ukrainian, plan, Zelensky said. Zelensky also responded to a question about the threat from Belarus, which has amassed troops close to Ukrainian border, saying the situation is under control. Затягування цього процесу призводить до того, що Росія займається переміщенням цих військових цілей глибше на територію Росії. Тому, якщо знімаються обмеження партнерами, то дуже хотілося б, щоб це була стратегія перемоги України, а не політична стратегія. Разом до перемоги. Росіяни почали контрнаступальні дії. Це йде за нашим українським планом. Щодо Білорусі, скупчення бачили, бачили давно. Контролюємо цей процес. A group of key Republicans in the House of Representatives has urged President Joe Biden to lift restrictions on the use of American weapons for strikes deep into Russian territory, reports CNN. The letter was sent ahead of U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken's visit to Kyiv. It was signed by Michael McCall, House Foreign Affairs Committee Chairman, Michael Turner, House Intelligence Committee Chairman, Mike Rogers, House Armed Services Committee Chairman, Ken Calvert, House Appropriations Subcommittee Chairman, Thomas Keane, House Foreign Affairs Subcommittee Chairman, Richard Hudson, Helsinki Commissioner. The Biden administration fears that allowing Ukraine to conduct further strikes on Russian territory could lead to an escalation of the conflict and provoke the Kremlin to accuse the U.S. of direct involvement in the war. However, in their letter, Republican lawmakers argue that the administration's concerns about escalation have been consistently disproven since the start of the war. Neither Ukraine's use of U.S.-provided weapons in Russia nor its military incursion into Russia's Kursk region, the first foreign occupation of Russian territory since World War II, have triggered a Russian escalatory response, they wrote. An American official also told CNN that U.S. intelligence estimates show that more than 90% of Russian aircraft launching glide bombs and missiles at Ukraine are based at airfields located at least 300 kilometers from Ukrainian-controlled territory. This supposedly limits the effectiveness of ATACMS systems which cannot reach those distances. We expect this number to continue to increase. For example, Russia recently relocated its glide bomb missions from two airfields which were located closer to the front, farther east to airfields that are outside of range of ATACMS, said the official. Meanwhile, the Republican lawmakers argue in their letter that numerous other legitimate military targets remain within range on Russian territory. The Institute for the Study of War assesses that, excluding airfields, there are over 200 legitimate military targets within range of U.S.-provided weapons to include military bases, logistics nodes, fuel depots, ammunition warehouses, and command and control systems, they wrote. 
The lawmakers also assert that the restrictions hinder Ukraine's ability to prevail in its fight against Russian aggression and provide Kremlin forces with a refuge from which they can attack Ukraine with impunity. It is far past time the administration reverses course and lifts the remaining restrictions on Ukraine's use of US-provided weapons against legitimate military targets in Russia, they concluded. An anonymous US official told CNN that the US has supplied Ukraine with several hundred ATACMS missile systems and that Ukraine has used most of them. The official noted that the US has a limited stockpile of missile systems that can be provided to Ukraine without compromising its military readiness. Using this weaponry for strikes deep inside Russia would deplete Ukraine's ATACMS reserves, which could otherwise be used for other parts of its military campaign, such as in Crimea. However, the CNN source mentioned that, according to Ukrainian officials, there are targets within the missile range that include weapons production facilities which could be considered legitimate military objectives.